I think somebody in the, the Ball family went to Paris back in the 20s, saw the Louvre and said, see that? I want it in Muncie. This museum's a wonderful place. It's a A-plus kind of facility for the students and the faculty at Ball State, but it's also an important museum, art, fine art museum for the city of Muncie. The title of the show is Continuum, and it really has to do with this continuity between sculptural ideas and, and monumentality all the way from the Beaux-Arts period right up through Michael's work. There's a lot of people that are not familiar with who I am or what I do, and all I want to do is sort of open a door for them. My responsibility as an artist is I'm trying to present powerful, elegant pieces that have grace and harmony. It's a statement about who I am and where, where my work is in the history of sculpture. I was making three-dimensional things from the time I was three, and I just loved it. I loved the fact that you could, you know, make something and walk around to the back side of it and see it from a completely different point of view. I went up to Illinois State University and, uh, for my junior and senior year in, in graduate school and was up there one semester and enrolled in a studio foundry class and walked into the foundry and just, it was like, I'm home. I got a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship and shifted it over into arts administration. I was able to do it because the, the kids were young enough that um, I'd come home from work, would have dinner, play with the kids, and then as soon as they went to bed, I'd go out to the studio because I'm a night owl. I had overhead hoists and I had my welders and grinders and all kinds of stuff, and, and I was able to just go out and make art, and it was fabulous. I've been living here in Springfield for a long time, and it's a delightful place to live. All the things that you read about, you know, of, uh, of the art world from the, uh, the New York art scene have changed dramatically. You can survive as an artist in Springfield, Illinois. You just spend a lot of time commuting to work. I've got galleries in New York and Santa Fe and San Francisco and Houston and Dallas and Palm Springs. And so, you know, I just have to spend a lot of time getting out into the world. Coming from California to the landscape of the Midwest, the monumental sculpture came out of the fact that, you know, trying to make art that held its own against the vastness of the landscape of the Midwest or the vastness of the, you know, the ocean. Both of those were, you know, real important issues. We decided to invite Michael Dunbar to have a show here with our works of art because recently we had a gift of a monumental sculpture by Michael Dunbar. It's called Fallen Warrior for Eduardo. I had Michael Dunbar here. We showed him the sculpture that we have and he walked through our collection, was amazed by, by the riches that are here. And he said, well, why don't we choose these particular sculptures because they're by sculptors that influenced him. In the end, we did a show that's not, it's about Michael Dunbar's work, but it's also about the work in the museum and how they're connected. So it was a wonderful kind of synergy, let's say, uh, between showing our own collection and showcasing that and highlighting Michael's work. He said, well, let's do a show of your machinist studies because he said that he felt very strongly that it was at the front end of this latest tradition of, you know, historic sculpture. And so we came up with the title Continuum, which was years, you know, going all the way back to Degas and, and all the way through Henry Moore and Anthony Carr and all those. Here's the new guy that's the continuum 
of contemporary sculpture, and that's the concept behind the show. There's 14 of their pieces, and then there's 18 of my pieces that say, yes, this is the history of sculpture, and here's this new statement of what the continuum of sculpture is all about. And so that's the evolution that occurred. Every day when we opened a new box of his work, I was excited to see what would come out. I know the whole museum has been very excited to kind of set up and we've put a lot of work into the preparation to help make sure his work looks its best. We prepare the galleries for new work that's coming in, prepping pedestals, unpacking work, um, art handling, installing the work, uh, making sure it's lit right for the show. I come in before the artist comes and hopefully tweak it just so when the artist arrives, the space is complete the way they want it. Artwork's about history. The title, Continuum. I think having it here interspersed with the fine older pieces appealed to us. We'll have an opening get to mingle a little bit and have a chance to preview the exhibition before Michael speaks at six o'clock. And then you get to learn more about Michael, why he does what he does, his connections with these great sculptors. And then you can go back to the exhibition right after the talk and see some of those connections he's just made. It's a great opportunity for everyone in the community and all the students to come and see this. I can tell by the echo chamber. Good evening. The museum's first person artist presentations introduce students, faculty, and the Muncie community to artists with regional and international reputations. Tonight, I present to you Michael Dunbar, a sculptor who chooses to live in Springfield, Illinois, but is well known in Chicago, New York, and as far away as Wuhu City, China. Michael. Tommy, can you hear me? <laughs> You're here to see the work in the continuing exhibition. Shoot the Moon, which you saw in the gallery. I grew up in the 50s, and of course, in the 50s, the Eisenhower administration put the first American in space. Now the term, shoot the moon, means to give it your all, give it everything you've got to go for broke. This piece is about my efforts to go all out in the pursuit of accomplishing my personal goals. It 
So I was working on the concept of Mustang Sally, and of course that was a song that was big back then. This piece was initially Mustang Sally. Now, as I was driving to New York, I realized that I had the wrong name. I, I had, was calling it Mustang Sally, but I kept hearing the, song, the lyrics from Mustang Sally over and over again in my head, and it was Ride Sally Ride, and I realized that I should name the piece after Sally Ride, who was America's first woman in space. You have to understand I have a very successful wife and three successful daughters, all of which are very strong-willed, and I thought all four would appreciate having a sculpture dedicated to accomplishments of a, of a successful woman who knew no boundaries. I'd also take a moment to thank the staff, particularly Randy Salway, our installer, and the student assistants that, that worked with him, Jamal and Allie, I think they're here. Please, let's all give them a hand for a beautiful shot. I do not use found objects. Every piece on every sculpture is my design. I want the piece to be the way I want it because it fits into the composition of the larger sculpture the way I want it to fit. A museum like ours, which really encourages the first-hand experience between students and works of art. We all think we know a sculpture if we see a picture of it on a screen on our computer. But really, have you experienced that sculpture? Have you looked at it fully in the round? I really think that a lot of students today are losing that first-hand experience with physical objects, and especially wonderful objects like these works of art that we're collecting. So I like to see the museum as an antidote to that. If you go back in, in history, art, architecture, music, and philosophy, those are the things that a culture leaves behind that sort of says who we were and what we were doing. I just want people to, you know, come in and look at it, you know, and, and respond to it. And how they respond to it is, you know, just like how they respond to music. I mean, some music just things to some certain people and others it just doesn't work for them. No, I like control is what I do. I make sure these things make me happy. If they make me happy, pretty much they're gonna make other people happy.